Cat 2017 Cram, Critical Analysis and Reasoning Skills, Passage 29, The Ultimatum Game. As you view the reading of the passage, you'll notice some highlighted snippets of text. What I want you to do is garner meaning from these specific selections in order to answer the foundations of comprehension, reasoning beyond the text, and reasoning within the text questions that follow. Remember, if you're on the verge of the edge and you feel like giving up, don't. No one cares, but I do. All right, so good luck and happy reading. Paragraph one. Imagine that someone offers you and some other anonymous person $100 to share. The rules are strict and known to both players. The two of you are in separate rooms and cannot exchange information. A coin toss decides which of you will propose how to share the money. If you are the proposer, you can make a single offer of how to split the sum and the other person. The responder can say yes or no. If the responder's answer is yes, the deal goes ahead. If the answer is no, neither of you gets anything. In both cases, the game is over and will not be repeated. What will you do? Paragraph 2 Instinctively, many people feel they should offer 50% because such a division is fair and therefore likely to be accepted. More daring people, however, think they might get away with offering somewhat less than half of the sum. Paragraph 3. You may not be surprised to learn that two-thirds of the author offers are between 40 and 50 percent. Only 4 in 100 people offer less than 20 percent. Proposing such a small amount is risky because it might be rejected. More than half of all responders reject offers that are less than 20%. But why should anyone reject an offer as too small? The responder has just two choices, take what is offered or receive nothing. The only rational option for a selfish individual is to accept any offer. A selfish proposer who is sure that the responder is also selfish will therefore make the smallest possible offer and keep the rest. This game theory analysis, which assumes that people are selfish and rational, tells you that the proposer should offer the smallest possible share and the responder should accept it. But this is not how most people play the game. The scenario just described, called the ultimatum game, was devised some 20 years ago. Experimenters subsequently studied the ultimatum game intensively in many places using diverse sums. The results proved remarkably robust. Behavior in the game did not appreciably depend on the player's sex, age, schooling, or numeracy. Numeracy meaning the ability to understand and work with numbers. Moreover, the, the amount of money involved had surprisingly little effect on results. Yet, the range of players remained limited because the studies primarily involve people who in more developed countries and often university students. Paragraph 5. Recently, a cross-cultural study in 15 small-scale societies showed that there were sizable differences in the way some people play the ultimatum game. Within the Maki Gwengo tribe from the Amazon, the mean offer was considerably lower than in typical Western-type civilization, 26% instead of 45%. Conversely, many members of the Aw tribe from Papua New Guinea offered more than more than fifty percent. What cultural tra cultural traditions in gift giving and the strong obligations that result from accepting a gift play a major role among some tribes, such as the Aw. Yet, despite these cultural variations, 
the outcome was always far from what rational analysis would dictate for selfish players. Most people all over the world place a high value on fair outcomes. Hmm, that's good to know. Paragraph 6. For a long time, theoretical economists postulated a being called Homo economicus, a rational individual relentlessly bent on maximizing a purely selfish reward. But the lesson from the ultimatum game and similar experiments is that real people are a cross speed of Homo economicus and H. emoticus a complicated hybrid species that can be ruled as much by emotion as by cold logic and selfishness. An interesting challenge is to understand how Darwinian evolution would produce creatures instilled with emotions and behaviors that do not immediately seem geared toward reaping the greatest benefit for individuals or their genes. All right, that wasn't so bad. In the discussion of the ultimatum game, what is the significance of the statement that the range of players remain limited? In paragraph four, the limited sample did not allow the experimenters to generalize about all people. Limiting the range of players allowed the experimenters to better control the outcome of the game. Or C. Limitations on the game led to mistaken conclusions by experimenters at that time. I'll give you a moment to think. All right, this is a foundations of comprehension question, which means that it wants you to interpret the meaning of a particular statement made by the author, okay? The full statement in paragraph four reads, yet the range of players remain limited because the studies primarily involved people in more developed countries and often university students. The cause for the limited range of players is explained by the fact that they came from specific countries and educational settings. The following paragraphs describes a cross-cultural study that showed sizable differences, quote, in the way some people play. This is mentioned in paragraph four, demonstrating that the previous body of literature could not Generalize to all people. The correct answer choice, answer choice A. Furthermore, there's no evidence that the experimenters wanted to limit the range of players to better control the game. All right. Nor that there were any limitations on the game itself that led to um, mistaken conclusions. So answer choice C is obviously incorrect as well. All right, okay. In some trials of the ultimatum game, the proposed split is determined by a computer. When responders are aware of this, they are willing to accept considerably lower offers. Compared to the standard game played without a computer, these responses are more in keeping with what rational analysis would dictate, be out of keeping with what rational analysis would dictate, C, in keeping with what one would expect from Homo emoticus. I'll give you a moment to think. All right. This is a reason beyond the text question that wants you to apply the ideas in the passage to the new situations presented here in the question stem and answer choices, okay? So two of the response options, um, specifically A and B, are concerned with rational analysis or specifically what rational analysis would dictate for responders. 
According to the third paragraph, quote, the responder has just two choices, take what is offered or receive nothing. The only rational option for a selfish individual to accept any offer. This game theory analysis, which assumes that people are selfish and rational, tells you that the proposer should offer the smallest possible share and the responder should accept it. Okay, but when a computer determines the proposed split, we learn that responders are willing to accept considerably lower offers. Therefore, the responders are acting more in keeping with what rational analysis would dictate because they're, they are more likely to accept any offer. So this is what answer choice A is saying, okay? In contrast, the responders are out of keeping with what one would expect um, from homo emoticus, which is a term used to reflect emotional thinking in paragraph six to explain why um, people might not act in a purely selfish manner, okay? So that's basically why this and this is wrong. All right. Assume a fair offer is defined as 50% and responders behave irrationally. Based on the discussion in paragraph 5, it can be reasonably assumed that the author believes that the Makigwengo tribe had a lower percentage of fair offers than both typical Western societies and rational selfish players, b. higher percentage of fair offers than both typical Western societies and rational selfish players, or c. lower percentage of fair offers than typical Western societies and higher than rational selfish players. I'll give you a moment to decide. All right. Okay, so this is the reasoning beyond the text question that wants you to take the ideas presented in the passage Specifically, specifically here, the um, the rational theory and the discussion in paragraph five that included the Makigwenga tribe, and then you have to apply these ideas to the new situations offered in the answer choices. Okay, so all the responses make an assertion about the percentage of fair offers compared to um, typical Western societies. The passage states that among the Makigwenga tribe, the quote, mean offer was considerably lower than typical Western type civilizations, 26% instead of 45%. Again, you can find this in paragraph five. Since the mean or average Makigwenga tribe offer is 26% explicitly stated, it seems very unlikely that there would be a higher percentage of individual offers above 50% um, as compared to typical Western societies with a mean offer of 45%. This excludes answer choice B. So answer choice B is not correct, okay? All right, the second part of all responses makes an assertion about the percentage of fair offers that would be made by um, rational, selfish players, okay? And this requires determining what expected percentage might be um, based on the description in the text. So this, this is the complicated part, okay? Based on the game theory analysis, which assumes that people are selfish and rational, the rational selfish player would propose the smallest possible offer 
and the responder should accept this offer. So based on the fact that responder has only two choices to take what's offered or receive nothing, this means that the rational selfish player should propose the smallest possible offer of 1%, okay? Or like, I don't know, the smallest thing possible that they could offer above zero. And never offer a fair offer of 50%. The Mekagwengo tribe had a mean offer of 26%, which is higher than 1%. So we might expect for the rational um, selfish player to make offers lower than those people in the Maki Gwenga tribe. So answer choice A is out as well, and the correct answer choice is answer choice C. All right. Which of the following statements is not as strongly supported by the passage? Would it be A, the rules of the ultimatum game are strict? Would it be B, the results of the ultimatum game tend to be consistent? Would it be C, responders reject offers that are less than 20% because they are considered, they consider such offers as unfair? Or would it be D? Studies of the ultimatum game show sizable differences in the way some people play. I'll give you a moment to think. All right. So this is a reasoning um, within the text question, which means that you have to explore the key ideas and claims expressed in the passage, okay? So answer choice A. The second sentence of the entire passage states that the rules are, quote, strict. So this is supported. Um, according to the fourth paragraph, the game has been studied, quote, intensely in many places using diverse sums. The results prove remarkably robust. Behavior did not appreciably depend on the player's sex, age, schooling, or numeracy. Moreover, the amount of money had surprisingly little effect. So the evidence, so this evidence supports the claim rather that the results of the ultimatum game tend to be consistent. So this is supported and so choice B is supported. Um, as for answer choice D, let's go to D. The first sentence in the fifth paragraph explicitly states that a recent study of the ultimatum game showed that there were, quote, sizable differences in the way people play the ultimatum game. So D is supported as well. That means by default, the correct answer choice is going to be answer choice C. And there's a statement about people who, quote, feel they should offer 50% because such a division, division is fair. However, the, the passage provides like no analysis for the decision-making process involved in responders. So um, yeah, this can't be strongly supported. The passage is focusing more on the decision-making pro process of the proposers rather than the responders, okay? All right. 